was involved in most of them. She is getting ready to jump center against Kylie Watson. And Cochran didn't even contest it. Maddie Westfeld left it short. Cochran got the first of what will surely be many rebounds. Louisville with three grad transfers in the lineup. Taylor, Jefferson, Ricards, Harris, a sophomore, much improved over last year. And we've already talked about Olivia Cochran, who has been invaluable. Here she is, number three in white, Hannah Hidalgo. She is so quick. Like you pretty much know she's going to drive to the basket. She saw a little bit of room and got right there. And right off the bat, they're running that high ball screen for Hannah Hidalgo. She was so effective in the ball screen against Louisville back on Sunday when they played in the last regular season matchup. It's so hard to contain her coming off the ball screen. Louisville likes to switch. And when they get a bigger player on Hidalgo, she can generally get to the rim, Pam. And she's a very good free throw shooter. She's shooting seven free throws per game on average, and you referenced the ball screens in the last game on Sunday, and it really worked for Hannah. That was one of her best games in the ball screen. They ran 10 ball screen actions for her. She either scored or got fouled on eight of them. Pam, 80%. That's a pretty good percentage in one action for the freshman. And Jeff Walls likes that ball screen action, likes to switch on everything, and we'll see if Hannah might make him change his mind a little bit. Meanwhile, Ricard has just drawn a foul. Kylie Watson got her. And there's Jeff Walls in his 17th year. He's done such a fantastic job with this Louisville program. His 10th NCAA tournament with them, and every time they have gotten at least to the quarterfinals. And Neil Ivey, who won a national championship, both as an assistant coach and as a player for Muffet McGraw. And brings her team in to this with the highest net ranking of any team in the ACC. They have some great wins on the season. Beat Tennessee in the non-conference, and then, of course, the massive win over UConn when Notre Dame won that game in stores. They have split the two regular season meetings with Louisville, each winning on their home court. Watson can't get it to go. Harris comes up with the rebound. They also played in the ACC tournament last year. Olivia Miles did not play because she was hurt, and Louisville won that game handily after dropping the regular season finale. Great and box out by DeWolf inside. And DeWolf has been a terrific pickup in the transfer portal. It's a great score at Fordham. Good pace so far to this game. And neither team has hit a field goal. Kiki Jefferson was calling for it, Pam DeWolf. Obviously a bit shorter than Jefferson. She wants to take advantage of that matchup. No need to settle for the three if you're Kiki Jefferson. Attack inside when you have the smaller DeWolf on you. And that's one of the messages that Jeff Walls has been giving his team. To try to attack the bucket more. Chicago setting thing up, things up, and you see Westfeld and Watson come out for screens. Just a little bit too strong for Hannah. Harris gets another rebound, and no one steals the ball more in this country than Hidalgo, and she almost got one there. She is everywhere at all times, and one of the things that she does really well is off of a miss where you think you can relax, you get that rebound, and you think everything's fine. Hannah Hidalgo's there. She's just a pest. She is absolutely everywhere. It seems that she never gets fatigued throughout a game. Set the Notre Dame single season record for steals that had been held by Skyler Diggins. And Skyler set that as a senior. This is Hannah Hidalgo as a freshman. Can we just imagine the steals number she's going to put up in four years at Notre Dame? It's going to be tremendous. Well, you need like you would need a lot of paper to write yeah. down all the <laughs> records that she is either broken or is close to breaking. All the accolades she has gotten. First team, all ACC and Defensive Player of the Year as a freshman. Side shot, missed by Taylor, who is a UMass transfer. Citron just chased it down. Citron missed nine games. With a 
Leg injury earlier. So bad. Inside out. A great pass inside to Westfeld. Westfeld draws the defense. Kicks out to Sonia Citron. That's the big three for Notre Dame. Hidalgo, Westfeld, and Citron. All three of those players need to play well for the Irish. Citron has been hot her last three games plus. Almost 60% from the floor. DeWolf intercepts it. Thought about challenging Jefferson, who was Paul. Thought twice about it. Yeah, a little <laughs> Kick bit. Kick it back out. Good a decision. A little bit of a height advantage there. And so Citron sets up for Watson. Rodago hanging out in the right corner. Westfeld drives with her left hand. Good play by Matt Westfeld. Had Cochran on her one-on-one. -on -one. Was able to attack left, get a little bit of separation and finish. Started every game that she has played in in her career at Notre Dame. Has one more year of eligibility left. Jefferson, short, Hidalgo gets in there, and she's not going to let go. And look who's cheering hard on the sideline. That's Olivia Miles, who was an All-ACC, All-American performer for Notre Dame last year. Tore her ACL against Louisville last season. They say her rehab is going great. She's going to be back next year. And just imagine her playing with Hidalgo. But look at this inside out. Into Westfeld, draw some defense, kicks to Citron. Big knockdown. When Citron, Hidalgo, and Westfeld all score in double figures, Notre Dame is 13-3 and three on the season. That is a recipe for success for the Irish. Absolutely the big three. And there's Olivia behind Niel Ivey. And what a great announcement that was made when just a couple of days ago when Olivia told coach to go ahead and release it. Yes, yeah, she is coming back next year. There's been so much speculation, so many rumors. Citron, hello. Sonia Citron has arrived. She's here to play, had a great ACC tournament last year. And the first player out to celebrate with Sonia Citron is Olivia Miles. It is an eight nothing Notre Dame run. Louisville took a timeout. Ally, Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an Ally. When you're great, you're game. Burrow walked off the bus, hitting shots. Sonia Citron knocking down threes from beyond the arc. Maddie Westfeld being aggressive. And when Notre Dame can knock down shots from the outside, all that does, Pam, is open more things up for Hannah Hidalgo, but Citron, we know she's a key for this team. Absolutely unflappable out there. She's hit a couple of threes. Two turnovers for Louisville have turned into five Notre Dame points. And they have yet to hit from the floor. There's Cochran guarded by Westfeld. That's a very interesting matchup. Shot clock into single digits now for Curry. Cal transfer who is checked in. That missed badly. Marissa Russell comes in and we have a foul on the floor. Let's go over to Angel who was listening in to what might have been an interesting Louisville huddle. Hey, absolutely. Well, Kelly was breaking down the amazing offense from Notre Dame that we've seen so far, but it's defensively where they're disrupting Louisville the most. Jeff Walsh is just telling the team, ladies, calm down. Right now, we're getting the looks that we want, but we just have to take our time. The two turnovers were causing ourselves to get sped up. In a sense, just making sure that everybody is on the right page and just making the adjustments there, but just settling down. And Kelly, you've played in this environment before. The key in these early games, get the kids on your side very early. <laughs> Angel, you're exactly right. And it really is settling into a game. You're, this is a big arena. Most of the time you don't play an arena this size. And yes, those kids are screaming, as they always are, Angel Gray. But you're, you're so right about Notre Dame's defense. Notre Dame has picked it up defensively during this stretch where they've been really hot. And they aren't giving Louisville anything easy. Citron just missed that three attempt. And the kids are referencing their, I would say mostly elementary school kids, maybe yes. middle school kids who are getting to skip class with a purpose. And they just want to see shots go in. Sydney Taylor made that shot after the travel, and they cheered. Yeah. So all they want, if, you, if they see the <laughs> ball go in, they will cheer for you. There's quite a few of them here in Greensboro. They have seen Louisville go 0 for 4 from the floor. There had been a foul on K.K. Brantford. That's what sent Russell to the line, who hit one out of two free throws. Citron again. 
Here comes Marissa Russell. Doesn't get a lot of offensive numbers, but gives him energy, a very good rebounder. Good double on Cochran. Boy, Notre Dame's defense is making it very difficult. You've got to convert. Louisville is getting offensive rebounds. They're getting looks at the rim, but they have to convert those. Hidalgo what somehow found Bransford, who blew the layup. That would have been an assist with an asterisk next to it. That was good stuff. What a pass by Hannah Hidalgo. We talk about her scoring. We talk about her defense. She is averaging over five assists per game and over six rebounds per game because she does everything. And she's saying, come on, KK, you've got to help me out. Pick me up a little bit, but at least they got to hold on to the basketball. Hidalgo's five and a half assists per game. Shot clock is dying. Hidalgo elevates, just ticked off the front of the rim. Cochran couldn't hang on. That seems to sum up Louisville in this first quarter so far. Grabs the rebound but can't hang on. It's been some unforced errors, some mistakes, three turnovers all ready for the cards. Notre Dame does not have a turnover. They are not making the mistakes that Louisville is. Hidalgo popped free, rimmed out. Louisville played yesterday against Boston College. Notre Dame has not played since Sunday when they hosted and beat Louisville. Almost another turnover, and ultimately it is. Matt Marshall knocked it away. That's four giveaways now for Louisville. And Notre Dame, five on four right now with Cochran running late into the play. Westbelt looked open for three. Cochran is generally guarding Westbelt. Westfeld was open as Cochran fell down. Westfeld makes him pay. Westfeld second team all ACC. Louisville gets the field goal finally. It was Sydney Taylor for three. And we know Sydney Taylor can get going. She made seven threes in Louisville's win at Georgia Tech just a couple weeks ago. Coming off an off day yesterday where she missed six of seven threes and the Squeaky win over BC. Shot clock again winding down to Wolf, guarded by Taylor. Somehow finds a way to the basket. Excellent change of pace by DeWolf, being patient, stopping for a second with a little bit of a hezzy and getting to the rim. DeWolf scored her 2,000th career point this year earlier at Pitt, most of them at Fordham. She's a grad transfer. Curry, ball fake, Hidalgo stayed with her, Cochran banked it in. Well, Cochran called glass, got some loft on that shot, had to get it over the Notre Dame defense, and Louisville starting to find their offense a bit here. Very slow start, they didn't have a field goal until the quarter was well half over. Hidalgo so quick up by two defenders. In the ball screen, Hidalgo can be so effective. They switched it there. Hidalgo gets a one-on-one -on -one with Olivia Cochran. Cochran is one of the best post player defenders in the league, but Hidalgo still makes her pay because she's that quick getting to the rim. She's quicker than the guards that try to check her. That is a big time move to the basket by Harris. Nyla Harris, so tough inside. She is a tough cover. And there's Hidalgo just using her speed and doing one of the things she does best, getting to the free throw line. Hit the court fairly hard, but she can get the line. That first step for Hidalgo is so tough, and that's obviously a foul with the contact. Hannah Hidalgo, she shot 15 free throws against Louisville last Sunday. Not only does that put pressure on the other team by getting to the line and getting those shot attempts, but you also can get the other team in foul trouble. That's why free throw attempts are so important. She hit 12 of those 15, 26 points last week. She is lethal in the ball screen. Here's that screen, they switch it. Cochran tries to stay in front of her. Hidalgo takes her with one crossover, gets to that second level, and then scores on the bigger defender and says, and one, Pam, you can't guard her. <laughs> 
I think she was correct. Number 11, Salta Citron. Citron comes back into the game. And Hidalgo gets one of her rare rests. Just over a minute 20 left now in the first quarter. Hidalgo already with six points and a couple of assists and rebounds. Curry. Right into the teeth of the defense, and Natalie Marshall got a hand on it. And Citron was so good in that ball screen situation. We talk so much about Hidalgo's defense. Sonia Citron is a really good defender on the perimeter with her length. The last time these two played, she had four blocks in that game, Pam. Uh, Citron at 6-1. Jefferson decided not to pull it. Somebody needs to. One pass too many. Got to be aware of time and score and where the shot clock is. Louisville just Eight looks a bit out of sync offensively right now. It's five turnovers now for Louisville, and Hannah was out for a, a free throw, <laughs> literally. And that can do something, right? Gives her a one possession off, lets her take a quick breather, and then she puts her back in. Of course, for this final possession, you want the ball in her hands, or at least this final minute. Absolutely. And Coach Ivy was in her ear, too, when she was over there, giving her some more instruction. That was short. She misses the shot, and she picks you up under the basket. There are very few players that do that in college basketball. Also. In and out. Look at Nyla Harris yeah. battling. Always around the basketball. Sophomore from Orlando. Nyla Harris plays so hard. She's battling inside, fighting for that ball. There's three Notre Dame jerseys and Nyla Harris trying to get that basketball. Citron got the foul. She's the one who fell on top of her. It's the third team foul for Notre Dame. Curry draws contact. And it's a travel, not a foul. Curry shifted her feet. Turnover number six. Jada Curry trying to get her shot off, and she initiates that contact with DeWolf. I, I like the no call. They call the travel. They need Jada Curry to get going. She's one of the best shooters on this team. Could use some offense from her. Curry first year after being at Cal Berkeley for a couple of years. Here we go, final seconds. Hidalgo picks up a dribble, gets the shot off. And Notre Dame up nine after one quarter of play. Hannah's got six. She is so quick, such a great. Hidalgo have been great in terms of on-ball defense on these Louisville guards. Notre Dame's debut here is the four seed. This is our first semifinal. They will play the winner of our second game. Better ball screen defense that time by Louisville on Hidalgo. Forced her to give the ball up. That's what you want to do. Somehow get the ball out of Hidalgo's hands. After a fairly hot start, Notre Dame has cooled off from the three. After the West Belt miss, this game gets the winner of Virginia Tech Miami tomorrow on semifinal Saturday. Cards lost her dribble. Kylie Watson picks it up. Pam, this is what happens at the ACC tournament. We're just sitting here, and Sylvia Hatchell. Sylvia Hatchell just walked, walked right by us. us. She's sitting courtside. North Carolina coaching legend. Coach Ivory Latta and I, live to tell about it. I love hearing Ivory's stories about her and Coach Hatchell. They're still so close, talk all the time. It's a great relationship. West Coast had it knocked out of her hands. Nine seconds to shoot for Notre Dame. Maddie Westbelt has another year of eligibility left. We know Miles is going to come back. Could you imagine if they all come back? Westbelt comes back. Miles is healthy. Prosper's healthy. They got some freshmen coming in. They have this kid. That's going to be very interesting to see, Pam, if they all come back as Notre Dame had to get a shot off there with the shot clock expiring. And I know that Coach Muffin McGraw is listening to us over there on the studio set. I mean, are we talking Tampa, perhaps? Are we talking Final Four aspirations? If we've got Olivia Miles, Hannah Hidalgo, Maddie Westbelt, Sonia Citron, Kylie Watson, what do you say, Coach? <laughs>
Shoot. Coach hates when I look ahead. <laughs> the potential, let's say, is there. The potential is there. We'll and say we, that. And we certainly would look forward to that. Curry. Getting it over to Ricard. It's interesting, Coach Walls playing them together. Watson got a hand on it, but couldn't come up with the rebound. Long shot by Alif Istanbulolu. Who usually when she comes in, as soon as she touches the ball, she's going to shoot a three. I respect the heck out of it. I can relate. But Louisville is being so aggressive on the boards. They are out-rebounding Notre Dame by seven right now. They have six offensive rebounds. They've got to convert. They're, they're playing so hard inside in terms of attacking the glass, but they're not getting much out of it. Only one second-chance point so far for the Cards. The team shooting under 30%. Another offensive rebound, Hidalgo attacking the rim, will go to the line again. And that last foul, by the way, this is a big one. Niall Harris Louisville just picked up her second. She's invaluable. She is. She already has five rebounds, and now she has that second foul and is on the bench for Louisville, so they're going to miss her. And that time off an offensive rebound for Notre Dame, the defense isn't completely set off the O-board, and Hidalgo attacks right away and gets to the rim. Let's go over to Angel Gray as Hannah Hidalgo is at the line right now. How about the ACC Rookie of the Year as well as the Defensive Player of the Year? Also giving away these amazing earrings. This is her staple. She wears them everywhere. We actually saw her having, she had them on during warm-ups during the game. She can't play in them, so that's the only <laughs> downfall, but they gave these out just because she wanted a piece of her to be sent out to the media, talking about the National Rookie of the Year candidate. And it's just really special to see how she's made her mark, showing her identity as well. Just a player that is so much fun. And I got a new pair of earrings. It doesn't go with the outfit, but I love them. Yeah, you got that sparkly silver on today. Maybe tomorrow. Hidalgo! Called for the charge. Offensive foul. She did lower her shoulder in this situation. But Hannah's hoops. She loves hoops. I'm told she wears them everywhere except for games. She wears them in shoot-around. As you can see, wears them in warm-ups. She loves her hoops, catches the camera. We love that. Yeah, it's a great promotion. Teams do that typically, and there's some sort of a promotion to try to get players Louisville recognized Louisville for postseason awards. For Jada Curry has picked up her second foul, but the Hannah Hoops, that's one of the best promotions I've ever seen. Well done, Ashton Pollard and the Notre Dame media staff for getting that out. And I think there is a big debate right now for National Freshman of the Year, Juju Watkins, Hannah Hidalgo. When you look at Hannah's stats across the board, and how she's affected the game as she turns it over, right, on cue. I think it's a great debate between those two. And really, you know, I think if, if you have to give the edge to someone, I'm going to give it to Hannah Hidalgo. I see her more in person. I see how she affects the game. But I'd love to see co-freshman of the year between her and Gigi Watkins because yeah. they're both that special. Yeah, Watkins is scoring more points per game, but Hidalgo, to me, affects the other side of the... Right. You know, defensively, she's ridiculous as well. Pam, we're looking at the possibility of Hannah and Juju both being first-team All-Americans as freshmen. If they're both first-team All-Americans, I think we probably need to go co-freshman of the year nationally. But you look at the ACC awards, probably the easiest freshman of the year race we've ever had. Tonight, Latson was pretty easy last year. Defensive player of the year, though, as a freshman. Really impressive for the ball game. She sits down. Inside to Watson, and there's another foul call. Matt Marshall's going to come in for the Irish. Two straight for offensive Watson. fouls on Notre, Notre Dame. Ball, number 22, Kylie Watson, her second personal. Second and they call foul. Kylie Watson Entering for the Irish, number 15, and telling for a Marshall. little bit of a, a hold and push. And now that's two. That's big. Two fouls on your starting center. Notre Dame outscoring Louisville 2 0 in this quarter. More and fouls that, than points. And that was Hidalgo Freeman's. Yeah. Underneath, there you go. Mr. Lolo. From Sydney Taylor. What a pass by Sydney Taylor. The misdirection, a little no look through the lane. Notre Dame gives it up. Four turnovers in the last minute and a half for Notre Dame after they had zero in the first quarter. And finally, Notre Dame gets the bucket. It's Citron. 
She has eight of their 23 points. Citron, the junior. Second team all ACC this year. Missed nine games with an injury. Taylor can't do it. Marshall, clean path. So no Hidalgo, so they can't go fast, fast. But Citron gets down there quickly enough. Notre Dame fans wanted a foul. Curry, one on two, gonna wait. And she backs up over Marshall Ooh. and hits the three. Okay, Jada Curry has Nat Marshall on her, who has a, not a foot on Jada Curry, but she's able to create some separation and knock down the three. Curry can really get going from beyond the arc. Curry's first year at Louisville. Good score at Cal. Pac-12 freshman of the year out there for future ACC member Cal. KK Bransford hits the long two. Yep, Cal, Stanford, and SMU will be in the ACC next year. You're talking about adding Stanford to what is already the deepest league in women's basketball. She's going to be crazy. Lago's going to come in at the next whistle. Curry, short. Westbelt gets. The rebound. Hidalgo looks like a racehorse at the Kentucky Derby who is in the gate and can't wait yes. to get into the game. Exactly right. Hidalgo's coming back in. But how about Sydney Taylor? What a pass. Threading the needle as Louisville's finding their offense. But how about KK Bransford knocking down the jumper for the Irish? The big question is will Liz Kitley play? She did not participate in the open portion of practice here in this building yesterday. I'm not optimistic. You know, neither am I, and she didn't participate in shoot around yesterday. That was open to the media. She had that knee injury against Virginia, and it didn't look great. I'm, I really doubt she plays in the ACC tournament. Now, I think the NCAA tournament is still very much up in the air. She's attacking that rehab. It doesn't seem to be season ending. Of course, we don't know yet. Hopefully, we'll know more. But I'm still hopeful as a fan, Pam, that she could play in the NCAA tournament. Biggest lead of the game now is 12 points for Notre Dame. And that's what happened to Olivia Miles last year. She blew her knee in the final regular season game in Louisville. And that was an ACL for Olivia Miles. Yes. And, and we, we have no reason yes. to believe it's an ACL for Kitley, but we just it's don't still know. still an injury right. that kept her out. And, you know, and we certainly hope, all of us hope for the best because Kitley is a senior, this is her last year, and one of the one of the greatest players, certainly in tech history, if not the greatest, and a great She's kid the as greatest. well. She's the greatest, and Amor's probably the second greatest. Yes. <laughs> yeah, how fortunate is that to be living in the time to see them both play? Those, both those jerseys should be in the rafters the second they play their last game in a Virginia Tech uniform. And I've already seen quite a few Virginia Tech fans here in the crowd who I'm assuming bought tickets for the whole tournament. The Hokie Nation has really shown up this year. Lots of sellouts at home. They're traveling well. There were a ton of them at UVA on Sunday. Yes, that crowd was amazing. Also some UVA fans there. Just an incredible crowd. I believe the biggest crowd we've ever seen for a women's basketball game in the state of Virginia. There's a shot clock violation. The second biggest crowd was the 1994 title game when North Carolina got yes. that miracle shot to beat Louisiana Tech. With Coach Hatchell, who's With sitting Coach right Hatchell here courtside. winning that championship. Charlotte Smith hit the shot. And it was broken in Charlottesville last Sunday. Adago to Bransford. Boy, Cochran did her best, but Bransford got just enough lift. Cochran did her job. She was able to stay with Hidalgo, force her to pass it. But great vision by Hidalgo and a really good finish by Bransford. Hidalgo now has three assists. Louisville has not scored in two and a half minutes. So Cochran is able to stay with Hidalgo. That is good defense. But Bransford, with the presence of mind to cut middle, instead of staying baseline, cut middle where Kiki Jefferson can't find you. And a good finish by Bransford. Bransford with four points. Cochran quickly drew the double. And Hidalgo so fast to go out to the perimeter. Guards ran into Citron and threw the ball away. 
And I'll say it again, man. Hidalgo gets all the love. And obviously, she is one of the best, if not the best, defensive player in the country. But Sonia Citron is a perfect defensive running mate. Look at Hidalgo and Citron at the top of that zone. Not making anything easy for Louisville. Citron drives, gets the pull up, leaves it short. Now Taylor with Hidalgo guarding her. And a good no call. Sydney Taylor. As Taylor hit the basket. Citron to Bransford. This time she couldn't get around Cochran. Great defense by Cochran. Hidalgo off balance. And was standing on the baseline when she got her hand on the rebound. Hidalgo plays at like hyper speed. Yes. She's like the, the Trey Grand Vitesse in France, those really fast trains. You can't even see her at times. And what's crazy is that Hidalgo's won parade from the field. She has not made a lot of shots around the rim, but she still has affected this game in so many different ways. And that's the beauty of her game. Even when she's not shooting it well, she does so many other things for this team. Matt Marshall. That didn't look good. Hits it felt the like deck. Harris fell on her knee a bit. It's a turnover. Good defense by Nat Marshall. Woo! The ankle. Looks like she's all right, though. Wow. That could have been a that knee been bad. and an ankle. Yeah. She's fine. I'm good to go. That's a dozen turnovers now for Louisville. They only average. 15 and a half per game. Look at Cochran. Great defense making Westbelt give that ball up. Westbelt, five points today. It's had to work for every inch out there. Shot clock winding down. Inside a minute and a half to go. The doggo goes into hyper speed and gets fouled again. And that's the hesitation change of speed from Hannah Hidalgo. She's attacking to the rim. She hesitates for a second. Here's another look. She hesitates for a second to make Cochran relax and make Cochran think that Hidalgo's going to pass it. Cochran leaves. She says get through her cards, but she hesitates for a just split second and then speeds right back up to get to the rim. Fouled by Ricards and Hidalgo goes back to the line yet again where she is six for six. She's been killing them at the free throw line. Not only does she get to the line and get those free throws, but she's starting to rack up those fouls on those Louisville defenders. Yeah, that's something that's always interesting to look at, the fouls drawn. And Hidalgo is a master at that. Again, when they played last week against Louisville, she was 12 of 15. Today, she's eight for eight from the line. Russell drives into the lane and charges. Drawn by Marshall. Nat Marshall's been really good defensively for Notre Dame. And look at that. Ivory Latta, Muffin McGraw, Justin Walters. Justin Walters, perhaps the best dressed host in the game. The man has quite the Style. sartorial vibe. Sartorial to him. splendor. Yeah, Justin there it is. What color is Muffet wearing? Oh, green. Okay, okay. She has a lot of green. <laughs> She's allowed. The wolf, bing. The dog go attacks right, draws a little defense, creates an open look for Anna DeWolf. They have doubled up the lead. The dog goes still getting those hands in there. Harris back in, playing with two fouls. Hidalgo trying to put the hammer down at the end of the second quarter. Westbelt collects. And now Louisville can hang on for the last shot. Louisville just seven points in this quarter. Cochran, long two, no. Ricards can't, yes she did. She took it right away from DeWolf. But couldn't score. Notre Dame doubling up Louisville, leading 34 to 17.
not, but also just being confident, wanting more confidence out of his group and not being disrupted defensively. He also said we have to stop swatting down. Nine fouls committed. Notre Dame is 10 for 10 from the free throw line. And eight for eight, courtesy of Hannah Hidalgo, who has drawn five fouls just on her own. Here she is with the basketball. Winner of this game gets Miami, Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech is in the building. Liz Kitley walked into the building. She walked in, a little bit of a limp, I think, but we shall see, as Pam and I said, not really thinking she's going to play today, but we'll keep you posted. And hang in there, that is our second game. Citron now with a dozen points. And another turnover, Hannah Hidalgo's gonna score. She is gonna win almost any foot race in this league and maybe the country. And Hannah Hidalgo is up there applying pressure and Sydney Taylor stepped over the line as she was trying to pass the ball in to Nina Ricard. You just see the constant defensive pressure from Hannah Hidalgo. She gets the bucket, and then she's applying that pressure to where Sydney Taylor had to think twice about the inbounds pass. Another turnover. Yeah, forcing that turnover without even getting her hands on the ball. That's how Incredible. disruptive she is. Her motor, she never stops going. Most players, 99% of players, they score and they get back past half court. They don't just stay and linger and make your life miserable, but that's what Hannah Hidalgo does. And she just drew another foul. Hidalgo not shooting well from the floor, just two of nine. But as we said, she's hitting from the free throw line. She's forcing turnovers. Cochran now has two fouls for Louisville. Hidalgo with 24 20 point games this season. Had a triple double. Her very first collegiate game was against South Carolina. I've heard good things. They're yeah, unbeaten, they're right? Pretty good. They're pretty good. 31 points in her debut. That was unbelievable and also did it on foreign soil. You know, it wasn't even at home it, at Notre Dame. I think there are so many stats about Hidalgo that impress me. The, the craziest one might be that she has not scored in single digits all season. Right, long. that is very... She's a freshman. Yes, that something might happen, foul trouble, maybe you're blowing an opponent out, something. Watson, bottled up by Olivia Cochran, who's tremendous. Here comes her cards. Sydney Taylor, got it, and a whistle. Sydney Taylor. I really like how aggressive Sydney Taylor has been for Louisville today. Pushing the pace, you have a five on four with Kylie Watson down. Draws that contact, gets the and one. Big play for Louisville. Two fouls now on Hidalgo. Westfeld and Cochran battle for the rebound. They say it's off Maddie. And Hidalgo is averaging 31 points per game in Europe. In Europe. <laughs> I mean, right? That's got to be a, a record or something. And who else is averaging yeah. 31 yeah. points yeah. per game in Europe? Double H. <laughs> Cam, this is why you're the best. You find those <laughs> hidden stats. Cards. Bottled up. Hidalgo flew by Taylor. Good patience by Taylor, but she couldn't get the shot to follow. Neither could the cards. Keep an eye on Louisville's misses. Almost everything they miss is short. They had a battle. What a pass by so Hannah Hidalgo. So Louisville had a battle with Boston College yesterday. Notre Dame is fresh. They have the double bye. Feels like those legs are starting to affect Louisville. And it does make a difference. You've played in these it tournaments does. It before. really does. Day two, what's that like? Day two, you're exhausted. It, you don't have any other situation like this in the season oh, as you get a big God. rebound oh, there from Olivia Cochran. You might play back-to-back -back in your Thanksgiving tournament, but most of the time you have a day in between. Oh, that's another sweet assist for Hannah. West Coast. Oh, awesome. Doggo now with six assists. As we've said, she's not shooting the ball super well from the floor, but she's finding her teammates still impacting the game in so many ways. And you gotta love that, because there are some players. Taylor makes Ooh. a sweet move. How about that? Sydney, Sydney Taylor. Taylor. Pride of Long Island with nine points. But some players, when they're not scoring well, can kind of take themselves out of the game in other ways, and Hannah's not one of those people. She never does. And that is a trait that most freshmen don't have. The cards, nope. And stays with the cards. 
Hannah Hidalgo leading the break. Look at that pass to Sonia Citron and a great finish. Sonia Citron is a really good running mate to have. I'm thinking back to last year, the amount of times Miles would find Citron in the open floor. Citron just knows where she needs to be for her point guards. Yeah, that's invaluable. You get Westbell that time. Maddie Westbell. Feels like there was a point of emphasis for Louisville in the half, as Angel was talking about, to get to the free throw line, to keep attacking. We don't need to settle for threes. Only four free throw attempts for Louisville in that first half. Both Taylor and Curry have been trying to get to the rim more here in this third quarter. Curry misses them both. Mm. Cochran tries to keep it alive, but they're going to call a foul. And that that will be three That's on big. Cochran. Local foul on number 44, Olivia Cochran, her third, second to team foul. Cochran pushing Marshall in the back, going for that ball. I can see why the call was made. Would have loved a yeah. no call there. Yeah, that could have not been... Paul. Instead, it's three on Cochran, who stays out there. That's how much Coach Walls trusts her and how valuable she is to this team. Instrumental in the comeback win against BC yesterday. Boston College, two straight games where they took Louisville down to the wire. team that certainly can come back from deficits. That'll help. Curry. Jada Curry can shoot the rock. Notre Dame switch. Nat Marshall was on her. Jada Curry was able to create separation from Marshall. Knock it down. Last name Curry. Where's number 30? Can you guess who Jada Curry's favorite player is? LeBron. Uh, <laughs> just a guy named Steph yeah. Curry who can absolutely he's, shoot it. He's on. Citron does not get the roll. Cochran, right, oh, nice from the Cochran. baseline. Louisville getting some momentum back. If they can cut this thing to single digits, then I think we have a ball game. Notre Dame has not had the best offensive possessions in this third quarter so far. Led by 17 at the half. Bransford over Cochran, banked it in. <laughs> Put your palms to the sky. Here's the thing, when you bank it in, you have to act like, I absolutely meant to do that. You can't give him the shrug. You gotta say, yeah, I called glass. Curry guarded by Hidalgo. Slices around. Rebound Westbelt and Harris. And Citron, that's too far. That should have been an easy two. Instead, led way too much. Entering for Notre Dame. Hidalgo can't believe it. A rare bad pass from Hidalgo. And then KK Bransford. The backboard's there for a reason, Pam. Might as well use it. Yeah, why else? Why else would it be there? <laughs> Act like you meant to. That was a rare mistake from yeah. Hidalgo. She was so mad at herself. That's an easy run out to Citron. And she just overthrew her. Citron. Get, got to go right to the bench to sit for a rest after that sprint. She almost ran into the kids. Yeah. Get a little extra rest because we're sitting on a, an official timeout on our next whistle. Russell guarded by Westfeld. Here's Cochran playing with the three fouls. Another whistle. And we will take a timeout. Notre Dame leading Louisville in this quarter final. 25 ACC Women's College Basketball is brought to you by Ally. Enter now to match and watch your team take home the championship this season in person. All roads. Limp, and I could see a brace on her knee through the, the sweats. I just would be really surprised. But we'll see, and I know Virginia Tech's coaching staff, Kenny Brooks, one of the best coaches in the country, 
He will have this team ready. The thing to remember about that, you got to stay tuned to see what's going to happen. Virginia Tech's our next game. They have had this whole week to prepare. They have known what's been going on since Monday, probably, when they had tests done and were able to get back from Virginia. So they're much more prepared for what they need to do because they haven't had the speculation. They've, they've been aware of if she could go or not. So I think Virginia Tech will have a really good plan against Miami coming up next. And they have some really good players anyway. George Tamor yeah, certainly exactly. is. Uh, Do you see Tamor holding the door for her yeah. teammates? Yeah. She, she assists in any way she can. And here they are in the back hallway at the Greensboro Coliseum. Here's Amor over there on the right. Also one of the great characters, wouldn't you say, in the game? Great personality. She's really fun to talk to. We love having her on the set. Fun to follow on social media. Both her and Liz, that Virginia Tech team is full of great personalities. They do a podcast together. They do. It's also very entertaining. Queens of Cast. I've had the honor of being on the podcast. It was a pleasure. I'll talk to him. No, the go-go hoop. <laughs> Curry picks up her dribble. Shot clock winding down. Up and under, that is a terrific Nyla play. Harris. So impressed with Nyla Harris. What a move by Nyla Harris. Somehow got that shot off. And look, Louisville's come out with more of a sense of urgency in this third quarter. It feels like Notre Dame said, look, we're up. We're up 17. We're OK. And I, Louisville has had the, the bigger sense of urgency in this quarter. And they're pulling their way back in this game. Now, scoring Notre Dame by two in this game. They have trailed by as many as 22 earlier in this quarter. The problem is Louisville has more turnovers than made field goals. Lily Love gets her first action of the ACC. And blocks. Let's go back to Nyla Harris. Look at this finish. And over Matt Westfeld as well. Hanging in the air. Getting that ball high off the glass. What a play. Yeah, for more on Nyla, let's go back to Angel Gray. I know that we were talking about Olivia Cochran's passion and energy on the floor, but Niel Ivey, in one of her huddles, even when she was up 17, she said, Nyla Harris is outworking us. She cannot outwork us. Second half has been hers. She wants to bring those passion plays to this game, and that was an impressive finish. Great stuff, Angel. Yeah, Nyla Harris, she and Olivia Cochran to me are very similar in how they work and their motor, and they both represent Louisville basketball and how Jeff Walls wants his players to play. And Harris, just a sophomore, another turnover now for Notre Dame. They've gotten a little sloppy with the ball. Miss hey. Russell fouled on the follow. And this Notre Dame team is not deep. So foul trouble would really be troubling for them. And again, that's another reason why Louisville has to attack. We know Notre Dame does not have depth. You have to continue to attack and put the pressure on them by getting to the free throw line. Three fouls on Kylie Watson. Marissa Russell at the free throw line. Six foot senior from Ottawa. Yeah, that's not so smart. 74% free throw shooter, Russell gets one of two. So three fouls now on Watson, speaking of foul trouble, but Nat Marshall comes in for her right now. Mentioned Olivia Miles being out, but so Tassan Prosper, who is from Montreal, another Canadian, and she has not played since the end of November, out with a lower leg injury, a 6'2 guard. Certainly affects their depth. Prosper, Miles, and then Emma Risch, who's a, a freshman as well, who is going to play a good right. bit as a shooter. All three of those guards out for Notre Dame. Yeah, Risch had season ending hip surgery in early January. There's a three for Westbell. Big time three as Olivia Miles is celebrating. They needed that three. First three of the second half for Notre Dame. Second three of the game for Maddie. Really love. Getting back to Russell. Draws a foul, and she'll go back to the free throw line. Louisville continues to attack the rim. And Nyla Harris, she steps off a 
of Maddie Westfeld just for a second. Westfeld says, oh, okay, I'll take that. Knocks it down, and how about the bench? Olivia Miles says, we'll take all three of those. Foul on DeWolf, that is her first. And this would be close to a single digit game if Louisville would make their free throws. They're four for 10 right now from the free throw line. Maddie in the last three games, 16 points, 57% from the floor for Westfeld, who just hit the three. Louisville great Mikasa Robinson, who's now a GA, ran basically to the half court line to give Nyla Harris a sip of water <laughs> and then ran back. It's like a corner there. Westfeld misses that time. Curry, full speed ahead, up rocks. Good attack by Jada Curry. They had numbers. And Louisville, they've only taken three threes in this third quarter. They are getting to the rim. And it is making a difference. Getting Notre Dame in foul trouble and scoring around the rim. Louisville is hanging around, Pam. Don't go anywhere. We've got a good one here in Greensboro. All right, fans, let's get on your feet and get... When you have a history of greatness, the real challenge... Let's take a look at our star stories for players that have been crushing it of late. Brought to you by Crush, Citron, and Hidalgo. What a pair. One of the best guard duos in the nation, and Sonia Citron was really good in the first quarter, set the tone for Notre Dame. And Hannah Hidalgo, as we've said, hasn't shot the ball that well, but still has impacted every facet of this basketball game. Nine for 10 from the line, has six assists, just a couple of steals, averaging just under five per game. The fouls are piling up now for Notre Dame. They've had six in the third quarter after only committing five in the entire first half. Curry at the line, and again, you, you had mentioned this, let this sink in. As a freshman, she led the Pac-12 in scoring. Yes, she, uh, come can, on. she can fill it up. She can absolutely score. And it's been an adjustment coming to Louisville. I think they just teed up Jeff Walls. Well, Jeff Walls was being very animated the entire He's time. And then Katie Lukanek just teed him up. Oh, yeah, that... You should not, you, you should not be allowed to do that. Yes, Bransford basically took the ball out and then came back inbound and gave the ball back to one of her teammates. I, I can see why he's frustrated with a no call there. And he was correct that that should he have was. been a turnover. However, he ran onto the court. Right, exactly. And this is like the Kim exactly. Mulkey rule that is... Uh... I can see why he is upset. Yes. But he can't do that. Then you run on the floor, you're going to get teed up for that. But I can understand the frustration. That that should not be allowed to happen. So the technical foul, Citron got one out of two free throws, tipped by Russell, who then retreats. So we approach a minute to go in the third quarter. And it's tough, Pam, because just as Louisville was gaining some ground, you get those free throws back to Notre Dame. Cash in. And now Curry running into Hidalgo. And that will be three on Hannah. This has been a physical game both ways. And Jada Curry has done a great job of getting downhill in this second half. I have to imagine Jeff Walls talked to her at halftime and said, You've got to be more aggressive. You can't just settle for threes. Take threes when they are there, which she's done a good job she of. She is two for three from beyond the arc. But she's using to get fouls on these Notre Dame guards and get to the free throw line. Three fouls on Hannah Hidalgo. That is huge. And now a calmer version of Jeff Walls. Again, I get his frustration. That should have been a turnover. But I also get why the officials teed him up after his reaction. Yeah, you, you, yes. you can't run onto the floor like that, and, and, and we didn't even hear what he was saying. 
12-point advantage. It has been as high as 22 for the Irish. Another whistle inside. Marshall bowled over Taylor. That, however, is only the first on Marshall. The hook and hold. They're going to call that every time. Marshall hooked her with the right arm. I think that's the right call there. What if we had 11 fouls in this third quarter? Whew. Six, it's chippy. And six turnovers for Notre Dame in this quarter after they did a really good job of hanging on the ball in the first half. They only turned it over five times. Taylor, another aggressive move to the basket. And Louisville continuing to get downhill. And now you have a lot of these Notre Dame guards that are playing with two or three fouls, so they're more hesitant in how they can guard you. Ten-point lead, Hidalgo with the ball in her hand, shot clock off. Screen from Westbelt. Hannah attacks the basket. Not close, and what a play! by Kylie Watson. Off balance, falling to the three points. Was so aggressive, drew a bunch of fouls. And Hannah Hidalgo, only three points in the third, only took two shots. Let's see if they can get Hidalgo more involved in the fourth. She's playing with three fouls as well as Hidalgo. Started out there by Nyla Harris, who's a just a premier perimeter defender. Watson had the wild shot to finish the third and gets one that's almost as crazy to start the fourth. The last time these two played, which was back on Sunday, Kylie Watson had 10 points and four rebounds. Had a great game against Louisville just a week, or less than a week ago. Yeah, that was on Sunday afternoon. Notre Dame winning that game to earn the fourth seed and the double bye in this tournament. Another whistle. Here's Watson following up her bucket at the end of the third. Great pass by Maddie Westfeld. And then Watson going to the left. Really smooth inside. Using her dribble effectively. Making a quick move. And scoring over Marissa Russell. Well, on the other end of the court, Watson just picked up her fourth foul. Mm. Second year at Notre Dame after a couple of years at Oregon. Here's Harris at the free throw line. Watson had just started getting going on the offensive end. Now she's going to have to sit for the majority of this fourth quarter. It's going to be a lot of Nat Marshall for Notre Dame. Harris gets them both. Yeah, Watson with the last field goal of the, the first field goal of the, of the game was the last shot in the third quarter, or second one was the first shot of the fourth quarter, and now she sits down with the four fouls. I'd love to see some more ball screen action for Hannah Hidalgo. It feels like they've gotten away from that. Comes Marshall to set a screen. Hidalgo has to elevate. Rebound taken down by Curry. And well defended on that ball screen by Louisville. Lily Love lost it momentarily. Let's go over to Angel with more on Hannah Hidalgo. Hey, we can't underestimate what Jeff Walls told me at halftime about how they needed to adjust on the defensive end. He talked about the foul trouble, putting them at the line 10 for 10 in the first half. Hannah Hidalgo was eight for eight. She just has one field goal in this game. In the huddle, he was talking about picking your poison. We want her to take those outside shots. That's what they're choosing to do in the second half. And she's only been to the line once in this half as well. Great stuff, Angel. And, and those are the adjustments that Jeff Walls and his staff make at halftime. They have forced Hidalgo to take the mid-range. Lay off of her a bit. You want her to shoot the rock instead of letting her get to the rim and to the line. Westfeld gets the basket and her chance for a three-point play. Maddie Westfeld is so versatile. At her size, she can shoot the three, she can put the ball on the deck, she can get to the rim. So many options for the six-foot-three forward. Gets that first step on Nyla Harris and gets right to the rim. The numbers this year are the best since her freshman year. Marshall tried to save it in. Curry continues to be aggressive to the basket, continues to draw fouls. 
This is turning into one of the better games I've seen Jada Curry play for Louisville. She had some really good games earlier in the year where she shot the ball well from three, but right now she is being so aggressive, getting to the rim, and putting so much pressure on this Notre Dame defense. Third foul on DeWolf. Three-point play for Curry. She's got 10 points in this second half. Curry has gotten them back in this game. She flat out has. Has been a 22-point advantage for Notre Dame in the second quarter. Lob in and a hold. Lee Love was hanging on to Westbelt. Great pass, though. Good action by Notre Dame. Get the ball to the high post. Get a one-on-one -on -one situation for Westbelt. She's calling for the pass over the top. And honestly, good foul on the floor. Might as well get that foul in now. You feel like you're beat. Foul her before she goes up. First one on Love. A burst of speed, but another foul out on the perimeter. Louisville foul number 24. And again, Hannah had all doing that ball screen action. Basically, Notre Dame is daring Louisville because they switch everything. They are daring that post player, whether it's Lou Love, Cochran, Nyla Harris, to be able to stay in front of Hidalgo. And it's very difficult to do. Oh, how can anybody do that? Citron rolls one in. Citron continuing to be aggressive for this Notre Dame team. Look at the spin move. And the finish. She's just so skilled. This is a great move by Sonia Citron. Currently, Notre Dame's leading scorer on the afternoon. Lane violation, I'm guessing, on Louisville. Hopper got in a little bit too early. Citron makes a pay, getting the free throw to get the lead back up to 14. Citron leading. All scores with 18 points. Did not stop Jada Curry in this half. Have yourself a ball game, Jada Curry. She was hunting for that shot too. She was ready to let it fly. Shot that basically from where Jeff Walls was standing from his coaching position. Let's go back to Angel. Jada Curry is absolutely having herself a day, and it's really interesting because I was talking to Mikasa Robinson, the GA that you were referring to, Kelly, earlier. She said, I had to take her under my wing, understanding <laughs> the passion that you have to play with. Actually, for Mikasa, she's played against Notre Dame in this tournament three times. The rivalry is there, and let us not be remiss. The Big East rivalry as well, with both teams coming in 13 and 14, guys. Oh, this is without a doubt a rivalry. Louisville and Notre Dame, there's really no love lost between these two. And Jada Curry, when it's your night, it's your night. How about getting the roll from Jada Curry? And I love that you said that, Angel, because McCossa Robinson played with so much passion for Louisville. And Jada Curry is obviously so offensively skilled. But you're seeing that passion and tenacity from her in the second half. Closest this game has been since early in the second quarter. Notre Dame loses it again. We said, cut it to single digits and maybe we have a ball game. And that's what Jada Curry just did for Louisville. They have not been able to slow her down. And part of it is Notre Dame's in this zone, but also Hidalgo does not want to pick up that fourth foul. So she's not able to be as aggressive as she normally would be. 19 points for Curry ties a season high. She did have a 30 point game against Stanford in her freshman year with Cal. That is her career high. She has definitely got them back into this ball game. Hidalgo gets fouled again. And there's Hidalgo getting to the second level, getting to the post player when they switch that screen. And again, Hidalgo is able to get past Olivia Cochran, get to the rim, and draw a foul. And that is four on Olivia Cochran. It's just a war of attrition right now with all these fouls. 
Cochran, six points, five rebounds, and she will be back next year to Louisville to use her final year of eligibility, which is great news for all Cardinals fans, especially. And we have spent all five years in the Ville. And Louisville will return Nyla Harris as well, and Jada Curry, but those are both very young players. Jada Curry, a junior, Nyla Harris, a sophomore. The build around those two in Olivia Cochran, for sure. Bravo, one out of two. Averaging 24 points per game. She's only got 14 in this one. Curry. Hot as can be. Goodness. Jada Curry. A new season high, 21 points for Curry. 19 of them coming in the second half. And what's been so cool to see is she's not settling for three. She's attacking. She can still shoot the three, but she is scoring from all three levels and the free throw. Citron. Ooh, terrific move. Stayed with it for a follow opportunity and another whistle. Jada Curry said, get me in a one-on-one -on -one situation and just let me go to work. The ball handling, creating space, knocking down the mid-range. She has been so much fun to watch in this second half. Eight points in the third quarter, 10 so far in the fourth. 18 in the second half, man. Wow. Really Love just committed her third foul to send Citron to the line. Sonia gets a break. What a game by Sonia Citron as well. 19 points for her. 20 now with that last free throw. She's got 20. Curry's got 21. Citron has committed her second foul now. Feels like every single possession is ending in a whistle. It's just no flow to this game right now. Curry at the line. But honestly, Pam, if you're in Louisville, that's what you want. Yes. You don't want flow to this game. You're trying to claw your way back into it. You're trying to get to the free throw line, get Notre Dame in foul trouble, and Jada Curry has been the catalyst for the cards in this second half. Another turnover. Louisville with the ball down eight with plenty of time left to go. Jada Curry made this turnover happen. She got in that passing lane, made Hannah Hidalgo think twice, and then you see how excited she is with the passion from Jada Curry. Oh my. Good grief, Jada Curry. <laughs> 14 points in this quarter for Curry. It's a six-point lead. Hidalgo trying to draw another foul, doesn't, but gets it to roll in. Hidalgo and Curry are just going back and forth in this fourth quarter, each showing a ton of excitement and energy after they score. Rebound Westbelt off the Harris miss. Four and a half minutes ago, Hidalgo puts it in to another gear. Can't get it, Marshall. Tried for the rebound, but Love was able to knock it over. And now the officials will have a caucus to decide whose ball it is. And right now they're calling it a jump ball. Because it did not come to a decision, and the arrow points in Louisville's favor. Frantic finish on our way here in Greensboro. Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an ally.
when you have a hit. It's Steph or Jada Curry in number 30 in red today for Louisville. She has been so tremendous in this second half. 22 points, has knocked down two threes, has gotten to the line. She has drawn six fouls in this game. She has flat out taken over the ball game for Louisville. You look at the guard matchup. We talked so much about Hannah Hidalgo, and rightfully so, but Jada Curry has been the better offensive guard in this game for sure. And she has Louisville within striking distance, single digits, under five minutes. Could we see something crazy happen? Hey. Curry has 14 of Louisville's 16 points here in the fourth quarter and is outscoring Notre Dame. They only have 12 points in this quarter. Russell for three, hits it. Jada Curry gives it up. Notre Dame sells out the stop Curry. She gives it to Russell, knocks it down. Now we have a ball game. Five point lead. Notre Dame led by 13 at the half, or 17 at the half, pardon me. It was 34-17. Led by as many as 22 in that second quarter. Hannah. Big shot. Massive shot. Knocks down the long two. She's now got 18. Russell and Citron some contact out on the perimeter, and they call the foul on Citron. Good job by Jada Curry making the right basketball play. Give it to Marissa Russell, and she knocks it down. And how about Hannah Hidalgo? We've said Louisville's trying to force her to take jumpers, not let her get to the rim, and she said, I can make some jumpers too. A little bit. That was just the 18th three of the season for Russell. Curry. Her only mistake of the second half, certainly, is lost the ball out of bounds with Westbelt looming. 19th turnover for Louisville, but they've done a much better job of holding on to the ball here in the second half. They had 13 in the first half. Just six here since the break. Hidalgo missed everything. I think they're going to call a foul on Watson as Harris crashed to the floor. And that's the fifth on Kylie Watson. Let's see. Look, their feet just kind of caught each other here. That, oh. That's not a foul. Oh, that's not a foul. That's not a foul. That's really tough for Kylie Watson. She just turned around and started to try to run the other way. She actually was running two, but that is a fifth foul on Watson. And that Marshall comes back in. And now Lula will not have their starting center for the rest of this game. Oh, sorry, Notre Dame, excuse me. Harris gets a both. Back to a five-point advantage with just over three minutes left to go. Winner goes to the semis tomorrow to play either Virginia Tech or Miami. The Wolf all the way across court to Citron, who drove the baseline to perfection. What a catch and a play by Citron to catch that ball and then go right into her move and get to the rim. Curry. Tried to hand it off inside. They're gonna call another foul on Notre Dame. DeWolf with the reach in. Good pass by DeWolf, but even better. Catch by Citron. Watch, she catches and goes right into her move. That is really hard to do, but she caught it, was surveying the defense as she was catching it, and then went straight to attacking the baseline. The Wolf just picked up her fourth. Harris right back to the line, and she just hit two. with the rebound, gets it over to Citron. Louisville now has taken more foul shots in this game than Notre Dame. After they only took four in the entire first half, they've done a better job of 
attacking the rim. We have a 30 second timeout with the Irish up six. Take a look at this stat. This is from our ACC Network researcher, Jenny LaCroix. ACC teams are 160 and four this season with a double digit lead after three quarters. Notre Dame led by 12. In other words, Pam, this just doesn't happen for Louisville to come back and possibly win this game. Down six here with two and a half to go. Jada Curry has been doing a lot of work scoring wise for Louisville to get close. Citron with the spin move and then ran full four into Nile Harris. Now Citron has four fouls. Citron used that spin move earlier. This time Louisville was ready for the spin. Great play by Nyla Harris. Textbook defensive play, drawing a charge. Citron spun so she didn't have a good view of the lane. And Nyla Harris stood up ready to take that charge. Harris, such a smart player. Great defensive player. Taylor saw a little bit of a, an alley and took it. So he's got 13. It's only a four-point advantage. Notre Dame being outscored by eight in this quarter. Citron, a left Bransford open. She missed everything, but Westbell came up with the rebound. Curry stuck her hands in there. And held ball, possession, arrow, Notre Dame. It's natural to feel this way, Pam, but it, to me it feels like Notre Dame's playing tighter, right? You just gave up this big lead. You were feeling so comfortable in the first half. Now not playing as well. Watson's out with fouls. Louisville's playing free. They're playing with house money, and you can see the difference right now between these two teams. Louisville had to come from behind to defeat Boston College yesterday just to get to this game. Adago with a magical move. What and the finish. Move. What a play by Hannah Hidalgo. Getting a bucket when her team needs it. She's got 20. Curry just was surrounded by a couple of Irish players, but Jeff Walls rescued her by calling the timeout. So Hannah Hidalgo, a tough shooting day, but boy, when they need a bucket, number three is not a bad option. She is going to get it done. Ice in her veins. Doesn't matter that she hasn't shot it that well. And how about that move? Basically posts up Sydney Taylor, who's 5'9", so has quite a few inches on Hidalgo. Fakes to the middle, gets under Sydney Taylor, and scores. Hannah Hidalgo, she just has so many different ways that she can score. She is so far from a one-trick pony. She can get to the rim, she can shoot the mid-range and then finds a way to hang in the air after getting under Taylor's arm to score. As she was falling to the court, almost perpendicular to the court, when she got the shot off, let's take a look at the reset. Louisville with the basketball, possession arrow now going their way. Down by six. Notre Dame with some foul trouble. Hidalgo. Three. Citron and DeWolf have four. Watson has already fouled out. There is the day for Hannah. Great job at the free throw line where she is 10 of 12. She hurt Louisville from the free throw line last week in the win on Sunday. It's been a great display by these guards. Hidalgo and Citron for Notre Dame and then Jada Curry just exploding for 25 today for Louisville. Taylor gets it back to Curry. Hidalgo out there. Right back to Curry. And another whistle. It's four on hand. These two have gone at it all afternoon. I, I don't love that foul call. I feel like if anything, Jada Curry initiated the contact, but to me, that's a no call. That's a no call. A lot of fouls called in this game. Pam, hey, actually, I've just been informed you have four fouls. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Imagine how many I would have if I actually moved. <laughs> Curry just missed a free throw. 
Now to two. Lita builds on her season high now with 26 points. And Louisville only 17 of 25 from the free throw line. Make half yeah. of your misses. Think about where you are right now, too. That's 68%. Under a minute to go. Recovery by Lee Lee Love. That was well executed by Notre Dame. Hidalgo passed out of the trap. They found Nat Marshall, but then Lee Lee Love recovered so quickly to get her hand on the ball. Look at that recovery from Love. Yeah, what a play. Yeah, it looked like Marshall had a clear path. Under three seconds to shoot. Westbelt is fouled by Harris. And Jeff Walls is going crazy again. It looked like Nyla Harris had her hands up on this play. The only thing I could think is maybe she didn't. No, she let her, she let her, let her land. So she allowed her to land. Just feels like any little contact we're getting a whistle in this game. Westfeld, oh for two from the line in this free game. Free throws. Normally a 79% free throw shooter. One out of two. And another timeout in what has been, well it looked like a Notre Dame runaway, but Louisville's the kind of team, we saw that yesterday with Boston College, they never go away, but Jada Curry certainly fueling them, and here we are now down to the final 47 seconds. Yeah, Louisville does not quit. They never will, and they never have. That's not their culture. They've come back and made this a game. Jada Curry has just been phenomenal. And like I said before, the guard play has been great. Curry, Citron, Hidalgo, those free throws for Louisville might haunt them if they end up losing this ball game, missing eight free throws here. You make half of those, Pam, you make four more free throws. That's it. We've got a very interesting game right now. Curry, 23 of her 26 points coming in the second half. There's your reset. Both teams in the bonus. Louisville just one time out to go. They do have the possession arrow in their favor, but they are down by six. Inbounding the full shot clock. Sydney Taylor going to throw it in. Two teams split. Played three times last year. Cochran using her body. Looks like she might have taken steps, but guess what? They called another foul. They did indeed. I thought that may have been a travel. Take another look at this. Two on Marshall. Big free throws here for Louisville. If you're Louisville, you just want to extend this game as long as you can. Make this game last as long as possible. See if Notre Dame can make some mistakes. And you got to make your free throws to continue to hang around. Austin does just that. Notre Dame has been called for 17 Five fouls goal. here in the second half. And there's Liz Kitley in the tunnel. Getting ready to come out. She's got jewelry on and her hair's not in a ponytail. There it is, Pam. I was going to say, the, the thing that is the tell is that her hair is down. Yes. Her hair is down. She's got earrings in. These, these are the little things yeah. we notice. So there's no way she's playing uh, next in this game. But I am so interested to see how Virginia Tech looks without her. Liz Kitley has been so healthy her whole career. She missed one game in the ACC tournament two years ago with a shoulder injury. After that, she really has not missed games for Virginia Tech. And she's, of course, such a big part of what they do. So what will they do without her? I'm so intrigued. Yeah, so tough, as you, as you mentioned, so versatile. And 
has been unstoppable, really, the last three years. Three straight ACC Player of the Year awards, and only Elena Beard and Alyssa Thomas, back when Maryland was still in the ACC, and they still should be. <laughs> and that's every 10 years. Beard did it right, right. two to four, and then 2014 was the third for Alyssa, and 2024 the third for uh, Liz. And I know generations are technically more than 10 years, but it just speaks to those are generational players, and that's what Elizabeth Kitley is. She has been the heart and soul, the face of that program, but they also have Georgia Amor, who right away, I mean, right, she's worth the price of admission. And we'll see how they fare against a Miami team that likes to muck things up. Yep. So it'll be fun, the second, the second game of four coming your way on quarterfinal Friday. Hidalgo with Ricards in, trying to grab her. That's the problem. Try to catch Hannah Hidalgo. Trying to trap Hannah Hidalgo. It's almost impossible. She's so quick, can split traps with ease. And she is such a good free throw shooter. She's the last person you want to put on the line nearly 80% of the season, 10 for 12 today. First game against Louisville that Notre Dame lost. She scored 30 points. The last game on Sunday, she had 26 points, but 12 over from the line? Yep. Notre Dame is still, Notre Dame could have shut the door with some made free throws down the stretch, and they have not been able to. That's how you let teams hang around, is by missing free throws in these situations. And out of two for Hannah. She's got 21, which is about three points under her season average. And Louisville only has one timeout left, so Jeff Walls is choosing to not call a timeout here to save that. Now Louisville's got to go quickly and get some sort of bucket here. Russell brings it up quickly, hands it off to Cochran. She's going to go right at Westbound and put it in. Perfect execution by Louisville, and now they can apply some pressure. Notre Dame also only has one timeout. It is a one-possession game and a foul in the backcourt. It's on Taylor. I'm so, so sure they wanted to do that. And especially, you don't want to foul Citron. Citron is the best free throw shooter in the ACC. The best. At 91%. She did miss one earlier in this game. I could maybe understand fouling, trying to trade threes for twos, something like that, but you can't foul Sonya Citron. No. You gotta foul maybe Nat Marshall or Bransford. Curry trying to go into the lane, but Bransford was right there to stop her. And that's another technical foul on Jeff Walls, which means he has been ejected. So Jeff Walls exit stage right. He waves <laughs> to the Louisville fans because of course he does. And now he's gonna be walking by Virginia Tech in the hallway. Let's take a look at what happened. I, I, I don't see the foul there. I, I think Jeff Walls was just frustrated. Felt like the game was probably over. Wanted to let out his frustration. So Citron right back at the free throw line to put it away. I agree with you. I, don't, I did not see a foul there on Curry. But Jeff has been upset. He's been cranky pretty much all day. <laughs> and look, his team came out in the second half and fought. They sure did. They were down a lot by 22. It's not like he, he's not mad at his team because his team came out and left everything out there in the second half. Would have loved a better start, but the second half was great for Louisville. So associate head coach Stephanie Norman, who has been with him all 17 years at Louisville, takes over the first chair. A really good staff for Jeff Walls. But they're gonna run out of time, down seven. Notre Dame 
has the winner of Virginia Tech Miami looming. Louisville is getting into the NCAA tournament. Charlie Cream has them projected as a sixth seed. Unless something really wild happens, they will not be hosting in the first and second round, but they're going to get back into the tournament for the 13th straight year. They are. The only way they could have hurt themselves was by losing to Boston College on that first day. They won that game, so they're, they're most likely not going to drop. And we'll end up as a six, meaning they have to travel and go on the road for the first and second rounds. Won't be able to host, but anybody who gets Louisville in their bracket, they're not going to be happy. Louisville is a tough out in the postseason. Louisville takes a timeout. Let's take a look at our Bojangles Big Bow moment of tonight's game. People are going to look and say, you know, she was only 5 of 16 from the floor, but that doesn't even come close to telling the story. It doesn't. And, and that's what makes Hannah Hidalgo so special. Most players, they have to impact the game by scoring it well and by being efficient from the field. But she can impact the game in so many other ways. The free throw line, of course, her defense. Six assists, five rebounds. Ended with 21 points, too. Like, we're saying, oh, it's kind of an off night for Hannah Hidalgo. She had 21 points. Yes. If only everyone else could have that kind of an off night. Curry had a terrific game, especially in the second half. She just took it away from West Bell. Hannah gets it. Melissa Russell might be hurt. She hit her elbow on the floor trying to go for the rebound, but a furious comeback by Louisville.